Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, we delve into the incredible life of William Garneret, a fearless soldier of the 101st Airborne Division. Join us as we pay tribute to a true American hero. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay tuned for more inspiring stories from history. U.S. Army William J. Guarnier was born on the 28th of April, 1923, the youngest of 10 children, to Joseph Joe and Augusta Guarnier, who were of Italian origin. He joined the Citizens Military Training Camp, CMTC program, during the Great Depression. Guarnier's mother told the government her son was 17, while he was, in fact, only 15. He spent three summers in the CMTC, which took four years to complete. The plan was, upon completing his training, he would become an officer in the United States Army. Unfortunately, after his third year, the program was canceled due to the pending war in Europe. After the attack on Pearl Harbor and six months before graduation, Guarnere left South Philadelphia High School and went to work for Baldwin Locomotive Works, making Sherman tanks for the Army. This greatly upset his mother, because none of the other children had graduated from high school. In response, Garnere switched to the night shift and returned to school, earning his diploma in 1941. Garnere enlisted in the U.S. Army paratroops on the 31st of August, 1942, in his hometown of South Philadelphia, and left for training at Camp Tocoa, Georgia. He was assigned to Easy Company, 2nd Battalion, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, his first combat jump was made on D-Day as part of the Allied invasion of France. Henry had been killed fighting the German army in the Italian campaign at Monte Cassino. Wild Bill lived up to his nickname. A terror on the battlefield, he fiercely attacked every German with which he came into contact. To secure the small village of saint marie du mont and the exit of Causeway No. 2 leading up from the beach. As the group headed south, they heard a German supply platoon coming and took up an ambush position. Winters told the men to wait for his command to fire, but Guarnere was eager to avenge his brother and, thinking Winters might be a Quaker and hesitant to kill, opened fire first. Winters named Guarnere second platoon sergeant as a group of about 11 or 12 men attacked a force of about 50. The attack led by Winters was later used as an example of how a small squad-sized group could attack a vastly larger force in a defensive position. Wild Bill was wounded in mid-October 1944, while Easy Company was securing the line on the island on the south side of the Rhine. As the sergeant of 2nd platoon, he had to go up and down the line to check on and encourage his men who were spread out over a distance of about a mile. While riding a motorcycle that he had stolen from a Dutch farmer across an open field, he was shot in the right leg by a sniper. The impact knocked him off the motorcycle, fractured his right tibia, and lodged some shrapnel in his right buttock. He was sent back to England on the 17th of October. While recovering from his injuries, he didn't want to be assigned to another unit, so he put black shoe polish all over his cast, put his pants leg over the cast, and walked out of the hospital in severe pain. He was caught by an officer, court-martialed, demoted to private, and returned to the hospital. He told them he would just go AWOL again to rejoin Easy Company. The hospital kept him a week longer and then sent him back to the Netherlands to be with his outfit. Garnere arrived at mormelon le grand just outside Reims, about the 10th of December, where the 101st was enjoying a little R and Amp R, rest and recuperation, prior to Easy Company being shipped to the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium. That took place on the 16th of December, because the paperwork about his court-martial and demotion did not arrive from England, he was returned to his old position. While holding the line just up the hill southwest of Foy, a massive artillery barrage hit their position. Garnier lost his right leg in the incoming barrage while trying to help his wounded friend Joe Toy, who couldn't get up because he too had lost his right leg. This injury ended Guarnere's participation in the war. Garnere received the Silver Star for combat during the Brecourt Manor assault on D-Day and was later awarded two Bronze Stars and two Purple Hearts, making him one of only two Easy Company members, the other was Lynn Compton, to be awarded the Silver Star throughout the duration of the war while a member of Easy Company. 
William Garniere, a brave soldier of the 101st Airborne Division's Easy Company, showed unwavering courage and dedication during World War II. In fierce battles, he embodied the spirit of camaraderie and resilience that defined the Band of Brothers. We shall never forget.